very good morning in the last session we discussed a theory a complete theory for properties of solid so i hope that whenever uh, you, you yes uh, the theory part is uh, yes uh, video is released or uh, just uh, see that video and uh, prepare the formula sheet before coming for a problem solving session yes that is the very uh, correct way to do the problems in very efficient way so anyway i hope that you people are prepared the formula sheet and you read and practice that formula sheet so please make the formula sheet and revise it then only when i am solving problem then only you can easily understand what i am trying to explain for that particular questions okay so now we will start the session with that question number 1 elastomers are the materials which are so as we said whenever the materials which obeys the hooke's law you just see the options whenever the materials obeys the hooke's law we said that the graph between stress strain is uh, a straight line this is for uh, elastic materials which obeys the hooke's law but in the case of uh, elastomers in the last class theory class we discussed so for elastomers the graph will be a is a curve it is not a straight line it is a is non linear curve so it shows that uh, the it is it is not following the is a hooke's law so therefore this is for elastomers and this is for the materials which obeys the hooke's law which obeys the hooke's law so from this i can say that the elastomers are the material which are not following the hooke's law so the correct option for the question number 1 is is option c now we please come for the second question uh, for most of the material the young's modulus is n times the rigidity modulus where n is so in the last class i said uh, you please memorize the set of standard results between the relations between the various elastic moduli or constants there one of the relation is given so 9 by y that is equal to 3 by e ta plus 1 by b but in most of the metals or most of the materials that uh, uh, for solid materials that compressibility 1 by b compressibility is negligible so we can leave that then from this i can get you just uh, cancel this and uh, do the cross multiplication i can get that y is equal to 3 times of eta so y is x modulus and this will be rigidity modulus so by comparing this we can say that the value of n is equal to 3 so this is the so for the second question the option is b n equal to 3 now we please go for the third question so question number 3 uh, the in solid the interatomic forces are so totally repulsive attractive both a and b none of this again the students if you are thoroughly yes uh, revise the theory or if you saw the my what is that the theory lectures we can easily answer such type of questions there we discussed a potential energy graph so potential energy versus interatomic distance graph there we will get that graph the shape of the graph will be like this so this is the uh, equilibrium distance so where uh, that at this particular position there will be attraction so if you are moving like this the attractive force will be reduces if you are going moving like this the repulsive force will be increases so this is the positive energy potential energy is positive so there will be a repulsion and potential energy is negative there will be a attraction so in solid is yes, uh, depends on the interatomic distances uh, uh, yes uh, that the force may be as yes, a repulsive force or attractive force therefore the correct option for uh, third one is option c both repulsive and uh, attractive now we please come for the question number 4 um, a steel wire of uniform cross section 1 mm square is heated up to 50 degree centigrade and there the ends are clamped as yes, rigidly there we said that it is related to thermal as uh, yes, uh, effect on the as yes, elasticity there are, we discussed the two kind of as uh, yes, a thing one is called a free thermal expansion and another one is a thermal expansion where the ends of the as yes, a for question number 4 you just see there the ends of the material is uh, fixed rigidly so whenever the, it is trying to expand what will happen means that uh, restore as yes, a restoring force will act between the rod there we discussed that thermal stress so therefore thermal stress uh, we know that uh, s delta l by l that is equal to s uh, alpha into delta theta so this is the thermal strain what we discussed and for from this uh, thermal stress so now you see that what we are asking is uh, just go see that question so if the temperature is uh, falls to 40 degree and the change in tension in the wire so change in tension in the wire is nothing but we have to find out the uh, force so from this we just see that thermal stress so therefore sigma th that is equal to as a force by area and uh, also we know that y is equal to sigma by epsilon 
So this uh, y is nothing but as uh, Young's modulus. So that is sigma by epsilon. That is equal to sigma divided by instead of this uh, epsilon that is a strain, I can use this alpha delta theta. And the sigma is nothing but the force by area. So therefore, a alpha delta theta. So from this, I can say that the force F is equal to, yes, this is Y and you just do the cross multiplication here. So therefore, Y is, sorry, F is equal to YA alpha delta theta. So this is the yes, expression for the thermal yes, the force or the tension in the rod. Now you please do the calculation for this. So now you see that to take this relation, so therefore F is equal to Ya alpha into delta theta. So that is Y. So Y value is given as to be is 2 into 10 to the power of uh, is 11 and uh, then A is given, area of cross section is given 1 millimeter square. So kindly convert that area as to be in meter square. So 1 millimeter is 10 to the power of minus 3 and square of that 10 to the power of minus 6 into alpha is there. Alpha is 1.1 1 .1 into 10 to the power of minus 5 and then delta theta. The change in temperature is 10 degrees. So we just do the 10 degree. Yes, by solving this we can get that F is equal to nearly is 22 newtons. So for this. So the answer for the question number 4 is uh, option A, 20 new Newton. And now you please go for the question number 5. Is yes, which one of the following is not uh, the unit of Young's modulus? Uh, there we said that Young's modulus, uh, again, you please remember, whenever you are solving the problems, always write the formula because you are in the practice or as uh, yes, uh, learning stage. So whenever solving the problem, you please write the related formula, then only you can easily store that uh, formula in your mind. Then while doing the examination, we can falsely recall the formulas. This is one of the yes, memory trick we must follow that. So therefore, we know that y is equal to sigma by or sigma linear divided by epsilon. Yes, that means stress by strain. So it is a dimensionless quantity and this unit is, uh, this unit is a Newton per meter square. So just to see the option, so the Young's modulus or any modulus is equal to, that the unit is equal to that uh, stress unit. Now you see that Young's modulus. So Newton per meter square, dime uh, centimeter inverse, uh, minus, uh, centimeter minus two, all are this uh, option B, this option B is SI unit, and this option D is a uh, yes, CGS unit, and mega Pascal also, the another unit of yes, uh, stress or the Young's modulus only. So the correct option is option A, where it is a Newton per meter is given. So please go for the next question, question number six, assertion and reason type of questions. So for the two answer such type of questions, we must uh, very thorough with the theory because when the numericals are given, we can get the ready-made formula or the concept directly we can apply here. But in this case, you just see that um, such type of uh, assertion reason question, we must have the deep uh, yes, knowledge about the theory part or the content. Now you see that assertion stress is internal force per unit area of the body. Reason, rubber is less elastic than the yes, steel. So the first question is the correct one. Stress is nothing but internal force. Whenever the external deforming forces acts on the rigid body, the internal force will be developed in that. That is per unit area that is different as stress. Rubber is less elastic than steel because Young's modulus of uh, steel is more when compared to rubber. So even though the separate assertion and reasons are uh, individually correct, but this is not the correct explanation for the yes, uh, assertion. So therefore option uh, uh, B is the correct answer for question number six. Now I can go for, uh, yes, this is option B. I can go for question number seven. Which of the following is statement is uh, correct so just to see that sharing stress, there is a change in volume. But whenever the shear stress is acts on that, we said that whenever deforming forces acts tangentially, uh, there will be a change in shape. But the total volume of the solid is, uh, remains the uh, same. Therefore, the correct statement is, is option B, 7B. Yes, uh, because what about the other uh, yes, options are? You may ask the question. So sharing stress, there is no change in shape, but that is not correct whenever you are applying the, yeah, yesterday when you draw the diagram also, we said that one uh, yes, uh, rectangle is the slide uh, when due to the tangential force, there will be a change in shape. Hydraulic stress, obviously we know that hydraulic stress is nothing but the bulk stress or volume stress, where a whole yes, volume of the solid or any material is yes, reduces. Okay, so now we please go for question number eight. 
So question number eight. Now you see that two wires A and B of the same material. You try to understand children whenever these uh, keywords are given you kindly understand this. So same material they are given. So therefore Y1 is equal to Y2. Same Young's modulus of equal length. Then, then they said equal length also. Therefore L1 is equal to L2. And their ratios are given. Radii R. So therefore I can say that R1 by R2 that is given by S1 uh, is to so you just see that uh, it will uh, yes I can write here so you see that question um, for that so R1 by R2 so therefore question number 8 R1 by R2 is 1 by 2 and uh, since the materials are same therefore Y1 is equal to Y2 since their lengths are that length also same they said therefore L1 is equal to L2 now you see that uh, are subjected to the identical loads each words are very important to select the suitable formula or to do the problem. So identical load means a force also same. So therefore the force acts on that also will be same. Therefore F1 is equal to F2. And they are asking the yes, A, the increase in length in A is 8 millimeter. What about the increase length in B they are asking. So you just see that. So delta L1 is given. So delta L1 is given 8 millimeter and they are asking about what is delta 2. Now we please see that uh, since they said uh, Young's modulus that means the materials are identical or same material therefore I can write that Y1 is equal to Y2 by definition we know that S F1 L1 divided by S A1 delta L1 that is equal to F2 L2 divided by A2 delta 2. So since they said forces are equal so they get cancelled and length also is uh, but the area of cross sections are not the same because the radius are different and therefore you just reciprocate I can get that so A1 delta L1 that is equal to A2 delta L2. So A1 is nothing but for a cylindrical wire that is pi R1 square so pi is gets cancelled on either side therefore I can get that R1 square delta L1 that is equal to R2 square delta L2. So therefore from this we they are asking us to find out what is delta 2. So I can go for that calculation now. So therefore as uh, yes, uh, delta 2, so delta 2 that is equal to just uh, reformulate that equation delta 1 into R1 by R2 that whole square. So therefore you just uh, substitute that value. So R1 by R2 is given by 1 by 2 and delta 1 is given as to be 8 millimeter. So 8 millimeter into that is 1 by 2 that whole square is there. So we can write 1 by 4 and this gets cancelled out. So as yes, a 4 and that will be is yes, a 2 millimeter. So therefore the correct option for this question number 8 is uh, delta L2 that is equal to as yes, a 2 millimeter. So that is equal to as yes, a 2 millimeter. Now we please go for the question number 9. So question number 9 you just see that um, <coughs> so for your better understanding I can rub these things uh, for your uh, yes, a comfortability. So now you see that yeah now you see that question um, yes uh, yeah yes so just to read the question so the length of the elastic string is a meter when the elongation is uh, 4 newton when the elongation is 4 sorry when the when the longitudinal tension is 4 newton and b meter when the longitudinal tension is uh, 5 newton then they are asking what is the length of the string in meter when the longitudinal tension is given by 9 Newton. So before solving the question, so far we discussed 8 questions. You just copy that uh, as a solution and we can continue that.
So now we see the question number nine. So length of the elastic string is a meter when the longitudinal tension is uh, four newton and b meter when the longitudinal tension is five newton. And what will be the length when the tension is nine newton? So we know that uh, yes, f is equal to kl. Yes. So we see that so f is equal to yes. This is question number nine. So for your reference, I can write that. So k into delta l generally we already consider that a wire can be treated as a spring of a spring constant k that is y a by s l. So therefore we just see this. So delta l is nothing but uh, s l final minus l initial. So the new length is given as to be a meter. So therefore this is l final minus l initial general formula. So for this case I can give that when force is uh, 4 newton so therefore the corresponding length is a meter the initial length is taken as to be l naught for our reference so it is a little bit of lengthy mathematical work so 5 is equal to k into the next force is 5 and the corresponding s length is b and the initial length has to be l naught so and they are asking when 9 newton is uh, acts on that what you have to do so k into that length has to be l and you just see that l naught so say this is equation number 1, equation number 2, equation number 3. If any mathematics students are there, you kindly do this uh, simplification work. But for non mac students, uh, I must do the step work. So just to solve the, yes, uh, do this, 2 minus 1, then I can get that 1 is equal to, yes, uh, these terms gets cancelled out. Therefore, I can write k into b minus a. So from this, I can get k as to be 1 by b minus a so this is the expression for k and take that k and substitute any one of the equation so i can uh, take the first equation by substituting k there so 4 is equal to 1 by b minus a in the place of k i am just substituting one more it says 1 by b minus a so a minus l naught so just to do the cross multiplication so 4b minus 4a that is equal to a minus l naught uh, from this I want to find out L0, so take this L0 uh, yes, that side and bring it here. This minus 4a come to this side of plus 4a, so therefore I will get L0 is equal to yes, 5a and this plus 4b is coming to that side, therefore I can get uh, that has to be minus 4b. So this is the value of L0. So take this value and substitute in equation number 3, we can get, uh, so equation number 3 becomes just to see that uh, 9 is equal to b is uh, sorry k is 1 by b minus a into s l minus s l naught that is you just to subtract that so so 5a minus 4b and this is so just to do the cross multiplication so 9b um, minus uh, 9a 9b minus 9a that is equal to l minus 5a s plus 4b so we need L only, so take that L one side and the remaining terms. So when plus 5a is coming to this side, the my, yeah, sorry, minus 5a is coming to this side, it becomes as a plus 5a, therefore I can get that has to be minus 4a by subtracting these two terms. Or if you are feeling that a little bit uh, uh, yes, uh, tough, I can do the step work uh, clearly. So just to keep this L this side and take all the terms to that side. So minus 5a is become as to be plus 5a plus 4b is become as to be minus 4b. So we just solve this uh, yes, uh, 9b minus 4 is uh, 5b and this is uh, minus 4a. So this is the required length for uh, the longitudinal tension has to be is yes, 9 newton. So that is option b is the correct for this. Now you please go for question number 10. Yes, uh, the length of the elastic string obeying the Hooke's law is L1 meters, the tension is 41. So I can give this question for you as to be homework or self-solving because the procedure to solve the problem is very similar to in the same manner. So I am giving that as to be your homework part. I am going to question number 11 now. So question number 11, just to see that question number 11, yeah, the diagram shown below represents the applied force per unit area. You please try to understand children. Uh, many time where the students gets confusion is uh, they are studied the formula or theory in a specific symbols but in question paper the same quantity can be given in some other symbols or some other manner they may get confused how to apply the formula you please carefully see the graph in graph axis they are given uh, here has to be yes f is given and there x is given 
by seeing F itself, what we generally think is it is a force. But you see that the wordings carefully. The diagram shown below represents the applied force per unit area. It's a, even though they mark that has to be F, that is not F. They said force per unit area. That is nothing but S stress. So what they are actually given is uh, for question number 11, what they are actually is given in the axis is they said force per unit area even though they mark that has to be F there. So it is nothing but a sigma only. Since a sigma if for unit area, if A has to be unit, then sigma is equal to F only. Similarly, instead of giving epsilon, they are giving that has to be X per unit length. Change in X, sorry. So change in X means that the change in length delta L per unit length. That is a delta L by L. L is taken as to be unit length, then epsilon equal to delta L. Here that is given as to be X. So that is the thing what they are given. So please be careful with the symbols. Uh, whatever the theory you are studied, they are using separate symbols. Sometimes to confuse the students, they may give the yes, uh, different kind of uh, explanation. So please uh, take care of that. Now you please come to the question. The, the graph, you just see the graph, uh, this is the uh, yes, uh, stress axis and this will be strain axis. We know that we are already thoroughly discussed the, or uh, yes, briefly discussed the yes, uh, that stress strain graph general explanation. So just see the graph from here to S, from you just see that from O to S A, the graph will be a straight line. So that means the slope is constant. So we can say that the material will obey the S hooks law. But you see that region from B to C, the graph the having the S negative slope because whenever the yes, many times I said that. So just see the graph here. So this is A and they are disc decreasing then it is going. So this is B to C. Uh, whenever angle is changing from acute angle to because slope is nothing but tan theta so if uh, when you draw the slope for this line the angle is uh, obtuse angle more than 90 therefore the slope of this region will be negative so slope for this uh, region will be negative so slope is negative means uh, we know that that is uh, related to bulk stress that's why uh, bulk strain the, there only we can say that uh, there is uh, that minus delta v by v so therefore minus delta by v uh, delta v by v is nothing but the bulk strain that is a volume strain which is exist for uh, fluid or liquids so therefore the correct answer for the given question in which region the material will behaves like a liquid means uh, between the region b and c the reason is the slope of the graph will be negative where uh, that bulk modulus gets the or bulk strain or bulk uh, is uh, volume strain gets the is yes, a negative slope so now we please uh, go for the question number 12 so question number 12 is uh, a copper wire of length 1 meter and a steel of wire 0 0.5 of equal cross sectional area. So you please take a note for this question. So you just see that. So this is the yes, a copper wire and a copper wire is there and the next uh, another wire is given as to be uh, what is that uh, yes, a steel wire. So this is, will be steel yes just to see that. Uh, copper wire length is, say this is L1 has to be 1 meter and L2 has to be 0 0.5 meter and they said the same cross sectional area. So they are having equal cross sectional area so I can say that A1 is equal to A2 and their composite wire is stretched by the certain load which is stretched the copper wire by the yes, uh, length is yes, 1 millimeter therefore delta L1 is equal to 1 millimeter. If Young's modulus of the materials are given, say for example, this has to be Y1. So Y1 is equal to yes, uh, 1 into 10 to the power of 11. 1 into 10 to the power of yes, 11. I can directly write that uh, 10 to the power of 11 Newton per meter square. This is for uh, yes, uh, copper wire. And for the steel wire, it is given that uh, Y2 that is equal to 2 times of that. That is 2 into 10 to the power of 11 Newton per meter square. Uh, but now they are asking what is the total extension in the composite wire. So first we have to find out what is delta 2 here. Once you find out delta 2, we have the delta 1 and we can, we can find the delta 2. Therefore the composite length, delta total, that is delta net or delta total, that is the sum of the individual change. So delta 1 plus delta L1 plus delta L2. So now you please uh, do that. So this is the uh, thing what we have to be yes, uh, found. But do you see that uh, delta L2? So since they said that uh, they are uh, applied by the same uh, as a load, you see that they are stretched by their certain load. Um, so therefore, I can say that the cross-sectional areas are 
equal and they are stretched by the same force therefore I can say that sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 for this case. So, sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 and we know that by definition we know that uh, y is equal to sigma by s, uh, s, uh, s, uh, s strain that is stressed by strain. So, from this sigma is equal to y into epsilon. So, I can take this expression and I can write there or uh, you just see that therefore, s uh, so y 1 epsilon 1 that is equal to y 2 epsilon 2. So, that is y 1 y 1 int yes epsilon 1 is nothing but delta L 1 by L 1 that is equal to y 2 into delta L 2 by yes L 2 by substitute the values substitute the value uh, we can get that uh, uh, y 1 has to be given 10 to the power of uh, 11 and delta L 1 is given that has to be 1 millimeter. So, 1 millimeter divided by and uh, this L 1 is given that is equal to yes. Uh, 1 meter. So, I can write that has to be 1 meter or to use the proper uh, unit uh, we can uh, just see that this is 1 meter. So, that is equal to y to 2 times of 10 to the power of 11 and uh, I can uh, we want to find out what is delta L 2 and L 2 has given us to be as yes, a 0 0.5 meter or as uh, yes, 0 0.5 meter. So, anyway this meter meter gets cancelled out. So, even though we are not converting the unit that is no problem. So, just you see that these two gets cancelled out. This is 1 by 2 it will become as to be 4. So, I can get that. So, delta L 2. So, delta L 2 is equal to 1 by 4 or nothing that is nothing but 0 0.25 yes, millimeter. So, therefore, the total length is given by the total length is given by as yes, delta 1 is 1 millimeter and this has to be 0 0.25. So, therefore, delta L that is equal to 1 plus 0 0.25 that is equal to 1.25 millimeter. So, this is the uh, yes, uh, answer for the given question. Therefore, the given option is uh, option T. Yes, please note down the solution children.
so we discussed uh, question number 12 just now the answer is uh, 1.25 now please go for the question number 3 13 so to break the wire a force of 10 to the power of 6 newton is required newton per yeah, newton per meter square please try to understand children even though they mention the force f uh, force of uh, you don't think that that is a force you just check the unit given it is newton per meter square so obviously the given quantity is nothing but sigma only is required if the density of the material is uh, 3 into 10 to the power of 3 kg per meter cube then length of the wire which will break by its own weight will be you try to understand children so in this case what you have to do is our means as you see that <coughs> what is the stress required to break the wire by its own weight generally uh, question number this is question number uh, 13 so you just see that Sigma, general definition for sigma is a force by area. General definition for sigma is a force by area. Here, the force is nothing but uh, yes, uh, its own weight of the rod. So, we just consider this is the rod fixed at one end. Yes. So, it's due to its own weight, uh, what should be the yes, a value of length to break is. So, therefore, the, the mass of the rod is taken as to be mg, which will act as a deforming force here. Therefore, it is m into g divided by area and from this given quantity we do not have any other uh, uh, what is the data beyond this value so we can convert this m into yes uh, in terms of the given quantity so mass can be written as to be yes a density into yes volume so mass equal to density into volume into g is there divided by area again volume can be written as to be area into length so this area this area gets cancelled out Therefore, I can get a sigma is equal to rho L G. So, sigma equal to rho L G. That is the given quantity. Therefore, from this, I can uh, get that L is equal to sigma divided by L is equal to sigma divided by rho into G. So, now you please substitute the given value. So, sigma. Sigma as to 10 to the power of 6 as given divided by yes, density is 3 into 10 to the power of 3 is into and what will be there g is there if nothing is mentioned you can take g has to be 10 uh, sometimes it depends on the option we have to check whether g will be 9.8 or 10 so now you please i can take for convenience that has to be 10 so plus 4 is there is yes, uh, the 2 will be remaining therefore i can get that has to be 100 by 3 so this is the yes length so the all the values are in meter so i can write this so 100 by 3 it's approximately yes 33 point something but approximately the option matching with that one is 34 meter so we can assume that that has to be option a but the exact answer is 100 by 3 you now we please go for question number 14 so question number 14 this is another very good uh, yes uh, question uh, again you just go for a stress strain graph uh, we already said that this whenever graph is given you have to think about uh, two yes, uh, things one is how to find uh, check the slope or how to find the area for any graph kill or graph related questions now we see that uh, in this graph uh, we have to find out uh, uh, which temperature is more but you see that the f is nothing but uh, yes uh, is a force over there and this will be yes uh, x is x is nothing but change in length delta l so therefore they are given like this has to be change in length delta s yes, l that is here given by that has to be x and force f is there so we just uh, this is uh, say for example graph 1 and this is graph 2 and the temperatures are given this has to be yes sir. so t2 so take this is uh, 2 and this is 1 and this is the t1 the slope is nothing but a tan theta so we just see this is theta 2 and this will be theta 1 therefore slope Yes, 2 is greater than slope 1. So, that is the information what we get from the yes, graph. Now, you please come for the theory. So, what is theory says? Uh, for example, you just see that, uh, yeah, so therefore, um, slope of the graph, uh, yes, we generally just y. So, Young's model is you just take that y is equal to yes, FL divided by A into delta L. FL divided by a into delta L. So, therefore, F by L. So, slope is nothing but here the slope is nothing but so slope is nothing but F by delta L. But in this problem, delta L is taken as to be S X. Therefore, F by delta L. In this problem, delta L is given as to be X. 
So therefore, f by l is nothing but slope. So I can say that this term has to be slope. Therefore, y is equal to slope into l by a. So from this, uh, for a given wire, l and a can be considered to be constant. Therefore, y is proportional to slope. That is, Young's modulus is directly proportional to slope. But yesterday we discussed when the thermal effect we discussed when temperature increases. So when uh, temperature increases, when T increases, when temperature increases, the value of Y will be decreases. So now you see that, now you see that uh, Y is there and slopes are there. So since uh, Y and T are inversely proportional, therefore I can say that this is inversely proportional to the temperature. Therefore, 1 by T is proportional to slope or from this I can say that T is proportional to 1 by slope. So if the slope is more, the temperature will be less and vice versa. Now you see that second slope is more when compared to the first slope. Second slope is more means the corresponding temperature is less. Therefore, I can say that slope 2 is more, therefore corresponding temperature is less. Slope 1 is less, that means T1 is greater. Therefore, I can say that T1 is greater than T2 or we can say that T2 is less than T1. So, by this we can check the options. So, option 1 uh, that is option A that is T1 is greater than T2 that is the correct answer. So, now we please go for question number 14. So, question number 14 now, yes. Uh, a rubber, <coughs> a rubber called a catapult as cross sectional area has to be 25 millimeter square and the initial lengths L are given. So, this stretched delta L also given and released from the missile of 5 grams. So, taking this Y values 5 into 10 to the power of 8 Newton per meter square, they are asking what is velocity of the projectile. As we said, uh, elastic energy is always conserved and uh, since this is the uh, elastic force will be the conservative nature. So, I can write that for question number 14 by energy conservation, the kinetic energy of the body that is equal to elastic potential energy that is equal to elastic potential energy. So, elastic potential energy is uh, nothing but we already wrote that uh, 1 by 2 into F into delta L. So, in this case, you just check the given data, F is not given directly. So, we have to reformulate the equation in terms of the given quantity. So, what we have is, so this is the general expression what we are going to discuss for the problem discussion. But you just uh, see that the data. Uh, a is given and uh, yes, L delta L is given. So, A is nothing but yes, 25 millimeter square that is 25 into 10 to the power of minus 6 meter square and uh, length is given. So, L is equal to 10 centimeter that is 10 into 10 to the power of minus uh, 2 is uh, 2 meter and next uh, delta L is given. So, delta L is equal to yeah, 5 centimeter as given, 5 centimeter, therefore 5 into 10 to the power of minus 2 meter, then uh, m also given. So, so for your understanding purpose, I am just separately writing the given data, which will give you the better understanding for you, uh, otherwise you can directly solve it. So, y also given, y is equal to 5 into 10 to the power of 8 uh, Newton per meter square. So, <coughs> here we are not having the term F, so we have to modify the equation in terms of uh, a given quantity. So, therefore, I can uh, check that, uh, change that equations. Therefore, just to see that, yes, uh, just to see this. Uh, so, of mv square that is equal to 1 by 2, we can replace this F. We know that, um, yes, from the Young's modulus definition, we know that. Uh, y is equal to fl divided by a into delta l. So, here we are not having f term. So, therefore, reformulate this. You just keep f alone. Then what do you have means ya delta l divided by l. This is nothing but f. So, take this f and substitute over there. I can get that half m. Instead of f, I can write, sorry, half into f. Instead of f, I can write that is y a delta l by l into delta l is there. So, this is a delta l what is given. Therefore, for the given problem, so it gets cancelled out. So, m v square, so that is equal to y a delta l square divided by l. So, this is the, the final results of what we need for the problem discussion. So, therefore, substitute the m values. So, under the given data, so you just substitute that. 
that is m is equal to so 5 into 10 to the power of minus 3 and velocity we have to find out and that is equal to Young's model is a given 5 into 10 to the power of 8 and area is given as to be 25 into 10 to the power of uh, minus 6. You please you must have the patience to solve the problem in physics even though it is a little bit more calculative. So delta L square is the delta L is 5 so that square is nothing but 25 into 10 to the power of minus 4 and then uh, yes divided by L is there L is given by 10 into is divided by L 10 into 10 to the power of minus 2. So by simplifying this uh, you can get that uh, you just do the calculation so 5 5 gets cancelled and then uh, this minus 3 this minus 3 is minus 6 gets cancelled and this will be minus 1 and uh, this minus 1 is gets cancelled with this so minus 2. So what you are getting is uh, 25 to 25 and over minus 2 minus 4 minus 6 is there Therefore, v square that is equal to 25 that uh, whole square, 25 into 25 that whole square and this minus 6 and plus 8 gets cancelled into 10 to the power of 2 is there. So therefore, by taking the square root for this value, we can get that v is equal to 25 into 10 that is uh, approximately 250 meter per second. Please note down the solution children.